Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So recently I purchased a couple of tools for my oscilloscope as I'm trying to get better and more comfortable with using an oscilloscope as part of my diagnostic processes. So what I purchased recently was a these two amp lamps from Hentec. They are cheap compared to some other ones. Uh, they were about $80 a piece, so about $160 for both. I'm going to show you guys how they are, how they look, how they feel. And also, we are going to take a couple of measurements. This is the van I'm going to be using for today's video. And we're going to do some uh, tests, such as relative compression. And I'm, we're going to take a look to see drift um, from the amp clamps. And so, stick along if you want to see how the tool operates. For the oscilloscope, I'm going to be using this Autel uh, MP408, I believe these are called. I got this because I have that Autel scan tool and I can hook it up directly to it. Uh, this is the USB cable that you will need for it. And these are the clamps. So I took them out of the box and I put them here. You do have to put a nine volt battery when you do get these, uh, which I did that yesterday. And, but I have not tested them out. So first things first, you know, the way these feel. So some amp clamps, a little bit more expensive one. I know the PicoScope one has an arrow for current flow. This one does not have it, but it's not a big deal in my opinion because if, if it's going in the wrong direction, you just flip it over to the other side and you're good. However, one thing I do not like about these, so that button over there sticks at times, but that's not my main concern. If you go, you know, uh, slowly with it, you can actually get it to not stick. My main problem is the length of this wire. If you look here, this is how long this wire is. So I'll back up a little bit. That is it. Some other ones are way longer and the 600 amp one is the same way. So this is the big one and this is the smaller one. This is 60 amps. Uh, this one is 600 amps. I believe oscilloscope is not a strong part of my diagnostic of my diagnostics. I'm pretty new to it. I'm learning it. However, with practicing, getting good waveforms, known good waveforms, you know, getting your eye trained to it, that's what I'm trying to do. So, if you guys have any advice, leave it down in the comments below. Just don't be disrespectful. That's all I ask. Let's hook up the oscilloscope. And I'm going to start by using this bigger the 600 amp one because I want to do a relative compression test. So this is what I was saying with the cable. It's pretty short. So I have to bring this very close to the vehicle. So this is how we're hooked up. CC650 is the amp clamp. One millivolt equals 100 milliamps. Channel A. And if we come over here, I use, go to select the probe. And because we're doing the 100 milliamps, we would go to this one right here. If we were using the other setting, we would go to the 650 amp. I need to find out where the fuel pump is. And looking at this fuel pump is mini fuse number two. It's a 20 amp fuse. So let's take that fuse off because we don't want the vehicle to start to do relative compression tests. The fuse was right over here. I disconnected that. I'm gonna zero out the probe. As you can see, we're at negative one amp here i'm zeroing out the probe try to get as close to zero as possible now i'm going to go crank the vehicle we crank the vehicle i pause this so let's go back and see okay right here here we got a good screen we know that this car has six cylinders so i don't really necessarily need to know at this point which one each cylinder is what i need to know is relative to each other how are the cylinders so i'll go right here so i'm gonna go right here i took this arrow from the bottom and i'm going right there then i'm gonna take another one and count one well one two three four five six so one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six cylinders. Well, we want to look for relative to each other. How are 
these cylinders. I can see a little bit of change between them, but not much. Right over here, one of them is slightly lower, but I would not say that any of them are something to be worried about. So we can move these, any six of these around. You know, this one here is a little bit low. Let's move them again. For the most part, they it looks okay to me. So that's how you do a relative compression test. It's actually quite straightforward. It took me a while to sort of wrap my head around it, but it's very simple once you understand it. It's taking the amperage that the starter is drawing for each compression stroke. So every time there's a compression stroke, the amperage increases, and that's what these waves are. I've been practicing with the, with the oscilloscope whenever I can, just to get more comfortable with using it. So I can be more comfortable when I'm diagnosing a vehicle. What I wanna do next, I'm gonna pay attention to how far this will drift over about, let's say a five minute period. So it's 504. I'm gonna zero this out and we're gonna see how much this tool drifts. Now I have seen videos and they do drift quite a lot with what I've seen. Um, it's not the most accurate tool. You know, if you need complete precision, this tool is on the cheap side. Let me zero this out and we'll pay attention to that. So I have to hit that three times for it to zero out. But right now we're zeroed out. It has been about 10 minutes since I started this test and we have drifted about three amps. So I'm not sure how the PicoScope one is or, uh, or any of the Snap-on one. This is quite a lot of drift. It is the bigger amp clamp, as I said earlier, uh, but I mean, three amps in 10 minutes, that's quite a lot. I've got the small amp probe connected to the blower motor and we'll turn the blower motor on and get a couple of readings. I have the blower motor connected right now. We are drawing about, about nine amps actually. We can change the time frame. That's the type of readings we are getting. So this is what we have uh, now. This the blower speed is on low. This is what we're getting about 3.4 volts. I mean, 3.4 amps. We were getting about nine amps on fan speed high. So good indication that the blower motor, everything is working as it should. The signal seems normal. If you're chasing a intermittent, you can play around with the wires pay attention to the signal and, you know, sort of get a good idea. Uh, one thing I do have to say I do not like about this scope is I can only get 32 pages on here. I cannot change this screen to get more, more capture ring pages. I can change the time base, but, uh, you know, on the, on the Pico, you, you're able to change how many pages you want to get. You know, 50 pages would be ideal in my opinion, at least for me. But yeah, this one I wouldn't be able to. Uh, if you guys know, I'm not sure if the PC based version uh, is any different. Uh, if it is, let me know in the comments down below. But for this one, there's not much you can change. Okay, I'm gonna do the same test as I did with the other one. I'm gonna do a drift test, zero exactly. It's 524. We're gonna wait about 10 minutes and see how much uh, this changes compared to the other one. So I think it's been about 10 minutes or so, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. We have drifted about point, what's that, like a tenth of a milliamp. Um, it's not that much. It's actually pretty close to zero. Uh, in about half an hour, it's probably gonna be about 0.1 amps, so 10 milliamps. It's not huge. It's not, I would say that's, that's not bad. That's all I have for you guys in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one.